Are you a growing business looking for simple and easy to use marketing tools? Don't worry, HubSpot's Marketing Hub Starter totally has you covered. To get started, click the link in the description below and sign up for our free tools and upgrade to Starter whenever you're ready. Leads are what keep your business alive, and that's why it's important to use Marketing Hub's lead management tools to stay on top of all of your prospects. Let me show you how it works. To get started with leads, we're gonna create a form to capture leads. Simply start by clicking Marketing and Forms. Here, you'll be able to click Create Form to create a new form to live on a website. We'll go ahead and click an embedded form. Here, you can see we have lots of different templates to choose from. I would like a newsletter sign up, and here's a preview of that newsletter sign up form. I click Start to start customizing the form. Now, my friend Devin always likes to make sure that the last name and first name are on the same line, so I'll drag this one right over here. There we go. And for my newsletter, I like to send special offers based on what city people are in, so I'll add city. Now that I can see my form starting to take place, I'll make sure I give it a recognizable name. Next, I'll click on options. Here I get some special options to decide what happens with my form. So first, what should happen after somebody submits a form? We can give them a thank you message, send them directly to a certain HubSpot page, or even my scheduling page, or select certain conditions that occur based on your needs. If you scroll down, you'll also see we can set the life cycle stage to a lead, set any follow-up options, send a submission notification to a contact owner or a certain rep, make sure that we have the correct language, add it to a marketing campaign, and for me, I always like to create a contact for any new email addresses. Next, I'll select Style and Preview. Here I can see that I've got some styles that are created for me. I'll go ahead and select that one, but if I want to customize it, I can simply scroll down to style where I can update fonts and colors. Finally, I'll select automation. This allows you to automate what happens after a form is submitted, such as sending somebody a welcome email or creating your own simple workflow. I'll go ahead and click update and select publish. And here is my new form. Now I can select to put it on my website right away by selecting go to HubSpot CMS. I'll go ahead and click on the website page where I want this form to live. Now it's time to add my form to my website so I can start generating leads. I'll select add. I'll type form into the field box and there's my form. I'll scroll it down right here. And I can even select which form it is, which is my new test form. And there it is. My form is ready to go collecting leads. I can go ahead and click preview and even fill it out to make sure that it works. I'll go ahead and submit, and there is my success message. Things are looking good. Now that the form is out there collecting leads, where do they go? Don't worry, HubSpot's got you covered because it automatically adds all your contacts directly into your CRM. To see the contacts from your forms, go ahead and click CRM and Contacts. Here you can see is our brand new Buzz Lightyear. I can even click on that lead. I can see that the form was submitted today. The life cycle has changed to a lead, and here I could add any important notes, log emails, calls, tasks, and meetings for this lead. So now that the leads are in your CRM, it's important to take a look at the data to see how your forms are performing. That's where reports and dashboards come in super helpful. To get started with reports and dashboards, scroll over to your toolbar and select reporting and data. Now remember, dashboards are a series of reports on one screen. I'll go ahead and select reporting and data and dashboards. I'll go ahead and click Create Dashboard and search for a lead dashboard. There's one right here. It looks like it has these eight different reports. They all look good to me, so I'll select Next. Now I can give this a great name and I can choose to see who has access to this dashboard. Is it private? Do I want everyone to see it or only specific people? I like to share my data, so there's everybody and I'll click Create Dashboard. Now when I go back to my dashboard screen, I can select down and see there's my lead generation dashboard with eight reports giving me tons of insights onto how my forms and my leads are performing. Now that you have lead scoring set up and you're able to identify those hot leads, what do you do next? This is where lead segmenting comes in handy. To get started segmenting your leads, scroll on over to CRM and select lists. Now there's two main types of lists, active lists and static lists. Static lists are static. Once you put somebody in a list, they never leave unless you take them out. But with an active list, 
Contacts can flow in and out of that list based on certain criteria. We're going to set up an active list for leads that have a score of 100 or more. Let me show you how it works. To get started, hit Create List, give it a name, we'll make it an active list, select Next. Here we can start to add the filters for the lead scoring. We'll select Add Filter, Contact, Contact Properties, and we'll search for HubSpot Score. Here we want to make sure that their HubSpot score is greater than 100. And if so, we'll add that filter and save the list. Now that you've got this list of leads with a score of over 100, you can start segmenting them by sending them marketing emails, even updating website copy for leads with a score over 100. Now that is a smart CRM. Let's get started looking how email works within HubSpot. Simply select marketing and email. Here you'll be brought to a page where you can either create an email or you can manage emails you've already created and have sent out, analyze the performance of all of your different emails, including the recipient engagement, the delivery rates, and any email performance reports that you have set up, as well as a data chart to show you how those emails are performing. Then you can also analyze the health. This monitors your email health. Are you sending bounced emails? Is your recipient list good? All of this data is right at your fingertips and will be actionable as soon as you send your first email. To get started creating your first email, simply click Create Email. Here you'll be able to select what type of email do you want. Is it an email that you're going to send to one or two or a group of recipients? Or is it an automated email that can get automatically sent out? For example, if somebody fills out a lead form on one of your web pages, an automated email can get sent out through an automatic workflow or a blog or RSS feed, which means you can publish this email once and send it out to a list of support. Subscribers. We'll get started with an automated email. Here you're brought to a page that has tons of templates for you to choose from. You can choose a basic template with basic elements or something a little more dynamic. To get started, I'm going to create a newsletter email. Now, once I select it, you're brought to our drag and drop editor. You'll see that anytime I hover over an element, it is completely editable. Thank you for subscribing to my newsletter. Each week I will send out curated content to help you grow your business with HubSpot. That seems a little short. Let's use HubSpot's content assistant to use AI technology to beef this up a little bit. To get started with content, assistant simply select a bunch of text click on our content assistant and here you can see i have a few options i can rewrite this expand it shorten it or even change the tone to get started i'm going to hit expand and let content assistant get to work for me i can go ahead and insert the text that it wrote or generate more i'll get started by inserting it now here i can select it again and even see that I want to change the tone and make it a little bit more friendly. Again, Content Assistant is working in real time using powerful AI technology to change that tone. And there is a great block of text. You can also see at any time if you want to add elements to your newsletter or to your website. For example, if you wanted to add your social channels, you can simply drag and drop it right into your email. And there it is. These all become customizable. Here you can add your URL to all your social channels so that your followers know where to find you and get great information. Let's say I want to go ahead and change the image at the top of my newsletter. I can simply select it and click replace. Here I can either upload images and keep them in my file management system or down here I can use content assistant again to use AI to create an image for me. I can go ahead and choose what style I want and even give it dimensions. We'll make it a landscape dimensions and I'll click generate and let content assistant create the image for me. I'm going to go ahead and select this one and click insert. And there it is. Now that I've got the content created for my newsletter, it's time to get the settings tight so I can send this out to my followers. Go ahead and select settings. Here you can go ahead and select who is the email coming from? What email address would you like to use? You can even personalize this subject line with personalization tokens. That way you can go ahead and select, do you want to include a company name, a contact name? You can even add in the preview text that they'll see in their email browser on their mobile device. Make sure that you give this a great internal name so you and your marketing team know exactly which email this is. This is newsletter sign up one. Select a language, what type of subscription this is, and any office location or other information. Now you're ready to send the email. Simply click sending. Now automated emails will be sent through what are called workflows. These are automated ways that we send emails. They can be either really complex or pretty simple. For example, if you have a landing page with a form where it says, enter your email to download our new white paper, that's a simple workflow. Either way, your automated email will be sent through one of these workflows once we're ready. 
but the first thing we need to do is review and publish. Here we can see it's giving me some quick warnings before I publish it that we didn't update the social media and giving us some suggestions as well. Once I'm ready, I can either preview the email to see what it's going to look like on mobile devices, or I can even select a contact to see what this email is going to look like. And sure enough, you can see it says, hi, Charlie, this is your first newsletter. Now I'm ready to go back and go ahead and click publish. Now that the email is published, it's ready to be used through one of our automated workflows. Let's go ahead and see what happens when a user submits their information through a form. I'll go ahead and select form, select the form for our newsletter and click go to form. Now you can see that as soon as somebody fills out this newsletter form, they will automatically get that email. I'll go ahead and click update. And now our email is ready to be automated every time somebody sends out that newsletter. With Marketing Hub Starter's CTA tool, you can create pop-up and embedded calls to actions to help nurture website visitors to certain conversion points. All of these match the look and feel of your website and feel totally natural, and they're super simple to make. To get started with the CTA tools, scroll on over to Marketing and select CTAs. To start making a CTA, simply click Create. Here, you can select either from templates that HubSpot has signed up for you, or you can choose to start from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and select a template to download a free ebook. I'll go ahead and select the template, and now I can get started with the drag and drop editor to make this my own. We see that this CTA has a form embedded in it. I can simply click select form, search for the form that I just created, and there it is. From here, I can also update and customize the styling, such as the text, the colors, and the button to match my branding. If I want to add anything, I can even update the images by replacing them with images for my website or adding in things like dividers, even a video or any other elements that are available in the CTA tool. Next, we click targeting to figure out when will this CTA be shown. We can choose to trigger it on a button click, trigger on a page scroll, on an exit intent, or after a certain amount of time. Here, this CTA will take place after somebody is on a website for five seconds. Next, we can select where the CTA will be shown. We can choose all of our pages or certain pages or even select an exclusion rule. We then can select who will it be shown to and how often it will be shown. Next, I can select options, add it to a specific campaign, or schedule the CTA to go live at a certain time. Now, it looks like my CTA is almost ready to go. I'm going to give it a name, call it Mark's New CTA, review it, and publish. I can go ahead and review any warnings, review the publishing details, and select Publish Now. Now that my CTA is created and live, all of the data will live right here. I can look at overall engagement with metrics such as views, clicks, click rate, submissions, and submission rate, and also just get a look at all the views over time. Plus, once somebody actually submits the form, I can see who has submitted the form right here. All of your data in one place makes it easy to make great marketing decisions. With Marketing Hub Starter, you can create and manage hundreds of cookie banners to manage tracking consent from your website visitors. Let me show you how it works. HubSpot's consent banner tools allows for geo-targeting even by language. Plus, we even include support for GPC signals. Let me show you how simple it is to create a cookie banner. To get started, scroll up top to settings. Next, select privacy and consent and click on the cookies tab. Here you'll see that your domains have already been connected and you can go ahead and select manage banners. Here, I'll go ahead and click create banner. I'll give it a name. Let it know which URL I'd like this banner to live on and select which country I'll be targeting. From here, I can even toggle on our global privacy control triggers, which allow me to insert default text to let folks know that the GPC signal has been detected. Then I'll click Next, and there's three types of banners you can select from. Notification allows visitors to know that they're automatically opted into accepting all of the cookies, and you'll be shown a banner just to let them know. Or you can select an opt-in, in which visitors will only accept cookies if they opt in via the banner, or an opt out, which will automatically accept all cookies, but visitors have the option to opt out. For now, I'll select notification, select which language I want that notification in, and click publish. Now I can come back and see that my banner has been activated. I can even click view it on the site to take a look at what my cookies banner looks like. 
And that's how simple it is to create cookie banners for your website visitors. As you can see, there are dozens of features and tools included in Marketing Hub Starter. To get started, visit the website today to learn more about Marketing Hub Starter. HubSpot is built to grow with you. That's why we're the leading choice among small business, mid-market, and enterprise customers. As a note, HubSpot works to make updates to our customer platform every single day. We're even updating our navigation bar and beta testing with users as we speak. So if something looks a little different in this video, it's totally fine. We're just making updates to make the platform best for you.